So Noam Chomsky was for a very long time a political hero of mine. Um, his book Manufacturing Consent is brilliant. There's no other word for it. It really explains U.S. media, certainly at the time, better than anybody else could. Uh, his book Hegemony or Survival is uh, another phenomenal book. You should check that out. He will take you from being a milk toast centrist type into being a, a firebrand lefty in no time. And he does it by laying out a rigorous case based on facts about the U.S. and our history. And uh, it's really, he, he's a treasure in many ways. Now, his legacy in recent days has been tarnished quite a bit. Why? It turns out he was buddy-buddy with Jeffrey Epstein. I did not have that on my 2023 bingo card. I did not have that. Noam Chomsky, buddy-buddy with Jeffrey Epstein, and there were some questionable financial transaction type things where something with a bank account and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. I don't know. Suffice to say, not good. Anything involving Jeffrey Epstein, not good. Okay, well, Piers Morgan had on Noam Chomsky for an interview. Now, Noam Chomsky is roughly 175 years old, and uh, he's still out there chugging along. He's still doing interviews. Uh, he is the epitome of the ornery old man personified. He's the platonic ideal of the cranky old man. And uh, there's a million parts of this interview I could show you, but there's this one part that we'll, we'll hone in on here where uh, I'll, just, I'll just let him do the talking. Let's watch. Who, who, who has been for you the best American president of your lifetime and who's been the worst? In my lifetime... FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Facts. He's spitting. And also, God damn, bro, you were alive when FDR was alive? Good googly moogly. Woo! I mean, that's, goodness gracious me. That's crazy. And the worst? Too much competition, I'm afraid. <laughs> For me, I gotta go, it's close between George W. Bush and Trump, but I think I'm gonna give it to George W. Bush. Because he started the Iraq War, he started the Afghanistan War, we literally spent $7 trillion because of this man. Uh, he brought us the Great Recession. So I, I got to, by a little edge, I'm going to give it to George W. Bush. <laughs> I know you're not, you're not a massive fan of Donald Trump. How do you feel about him running again? No. If he runs again, it'll be a disaster for the world for many reasons. For one thing, Trump, as you saw during his first time, is dedicated. Actually, his... He has two commitments. One commitment is to himself. He's a paranoid, he's a, a megalomaniac, a psychopath. <laughs> All that concerns him is me. The other commitment is to serve corporate power and great wealth abjectly. His one legislative achievement was a huge gift to tax gift to the ultra wealth, ultra rich, and the corporate sector, and nothing else. But he is a major climate denialist. He denies that global warming is taking place. He wants to maximize the use of fossil fuels, including the most dangerous of them, uh, and to eliminate regulations which might mitigate the catastrophe. That's a death sentence for the human species. Domestically, he's made it very clear that he wants to institute what we would properly call a proto-fascist state, eliminate the civil service since the mid-19th century, like every other democratic society, the United States has been a, has had a non-partisan civil service, which does most of the administration, which keeps the society running. Britain has the same. Uh, others have the same. Trump has made it explicit that he wants to eliminate it, replace it by loyalists who will put in power. That undercuts what remains a functioning democracy. We can go on. It would be a colossal disaster, and it's not unlikely you look at polls. Yeah. No, I mean, he's, he's, he's way ahead in the Republican nomination. You know what? He may have just swayed me in real time. I'm going to go a tie between worst president of my lifetime, George W. Bush and Donald Trump. Because he's right about that. The thing, the thing we haven't seen, quite literally for all of U.S. history. I mean, mm, the asterisks of the Civil War, of course. Secession, of course. But um, this is a guy who tried to overturn the last election. He tried to do it, and he would do it again. And so he's clear about wanting to 
destroy the DOJ, build it up in his image with authoritarian right-wingers who are loyal to him. Same with the FBI. I mean, these are organizations which on their own are not good. He actively wants to make them worse. So for the, I mean, for all the problems with our institutions, you do not want them torn down and rebuilt in the image of authoritarian far right wingers who are loyal to Trump. Because then it makes it worse. And that's effectively what his goal is. That's what his goal is. And again, we haven't talked about this enough, but there's no way that what's happening right now ends well. Trump is already running. Trump is already leading by a lot. I mean, let's run through the possibilities. Trump can win the primary and then win the general. We get at least four more years of him, I say at least, because Lord only knows what's going to happen, right, after that. Uh, he could win the primary but lose the general. Well, he's just going to say he won. Again, he's just going to say he won. He can lose the primary, but if he loses the primary, he's going to say it was stolen from him there. Blame DeSantis. Probably try to do riots again and try to do a coup again. Or he could die. He could lose the primary, accept loss, but run as a third party. That'd probably be the least bad scenario across the board because then it's just, he just destroys the right in this country for decades if he does that. So, but there's no way that this unfolds normally. It reminds me of that PBS documentary. I tweeted the clip because it was just so astonishing. You saw every president from like FDR and onward, every president, I, I, I take that back. Every president since we had video, when they lose, they come out, you know, hey, I, you know, I accept defeat. Congratulations to my opponent. Uh, I know they'll do what's best for the country. They have my full endorsement. Something to that effect. A lot of fluff, vagaries, whatever, but it's the, the implication is clear. Hey, dog, you got it. Let's keep the peaceful transition of power going. And then you get to Trump, and he's the only one. It's like, actually, I think we won this election. Many people are saying we won this election. Then you have the 60 lawsuits, loses them. You have them trying to prod Pence to say, I don't accept these results. Then it was the hang like Pence situation. I mean, so he may have just swayed me in real time because he's just as bad selling out to giant corporations and serving the oligarchs and the economic royalists. But there's the added level of rank authoritarianism across the board, more authoritarian than even the likes of a George W. Bush, who's a war criminal, by the way. So I'll give it a tie between Bush and Trump as the worst presidents of my lifetime. Um, and Chomsky always is consistent in bringing up climate change as well. It was Trump who pulled us out of the Paris Climate Agreement. I know other Republicans are also anti-climate change or anti-doing anything about climate change, but I think there was a real question. I don't think other Republican presidents would have so brazenly pulled out of the international treaty we already agreed to. That's a level above and beyond. In the same way that Trump pulled out of the, uh, the Iran deal. I don't, even though the Republican presidents who are against the Iran deal, it was probably all bluster. And then when they got into it, hey, let's see what, ha what happens and how this unfolds. And it was working. And they probably would have left it in place. Trump didn't do that. So anyway, there's one other part in this interview which I found very interesting. It was about wokeness. And Piers Morgan asked Noam Chomsky about wokeness. And, um, Noam basically says, yeah, I condemn it. Nobody should be authoritarian, whether it's on the left or the right. But he also goes on to highlight, like, let's not, you know, paper over the fact that Ron DeSantis is leading an authoritarian charge right now in Florida where they're banning books. OK, you want to talk about wokeness, authoritarianism being a problem. Don't overlook that. My whole life, it was the left that was targeted for censorship. And let's not forget that's still going on today. They want to force into the classrooms an American exceptionalist philosophy, which does not reflect the basic facts of this country. That's a point that he makes. And he's right. And he's right. So anyway, there you have it. But uh, goddamn Noam, why'd you have to have an association with Epstein? Sad. All right, guys, that's the show. I love y'all very much. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Uh, you guys know the drill. Everybody click like, click subscribe. Um, click that little bell icon so you get a notification every time a video drops. Thank you to all the people who support this show on Patreon. Thank you to everybody who supports Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. And remember, you can always tip on YouTube, too. There's a thanks button there. And the links are below if you want to support the show on Patreon or Substack. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, you can listen to the full shows on Spotify if you'd like the full audio version of the podcast. I love you, and I will talk to you soon. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.